I'm Neve from Catfish, a series that investigates social media mysteries. Tonight, the new series True Life Crime investigates the most harrowing true crime mysteries, rocking headlines, and social feeds. These victims were young. The crimes against them were shocking, and haunting questions remain. True Life Crime is here to expose the truth. In tonight's case, 24-year-old Jerrica Binks went for a jog in a Utah canyon, and no one heard from her again. As a recovering addict, did she relapse and run away? Was she targeted because she was a woman running alone? And the biggest question of all, where is Jerrica Binks? MTV News reporter Doma T. Pungo examines the case, and in the middle of the investigation, a surprising discovery changes everything. Jogging as a dangerous sport. Jerrica Binks went for a run and seemingly vanished. But an alarming number of women have been harassed, assaulted, and even murdered while running. Is there somebody that's targeting these women when they're out running? The case of Jerrica Binks is the most mystifying of all. What's the likelihood of someone dumping a body in this area? And yet, it's a story that national media has all but ignored. It's really frustrating that Jerrica's case hasn't created a national wave of social media attention. When investigations reveal a troubled past, she would come to our house and have black eyes. It leads to more questions than answers. Foul plays the only reason Cherica did not return. We heard a couple gunshots right through that canyon. It's hard to know if it's okay for us to mourn and move on or continue to hold out hope for her walking through the door. Will we ever find out what happened to Jerrica Biggs? Hello, one, where's your emergency? Yeah, you guys see this? Long-distance runner Jerrica Bings heads out for a run in American Fork, Utah. She never returns home. When somebody goes missing like that, where do you even start? We've been using helicopters, drones, and uh, special dogs. So it's a lot of area we've covered. But the more time that passes, more of a chance that they're not alive. Wow. As a guy, I've never thought about the potential dangers female joggers face. But hearing reports about women being targeted while out running is deeply disturbing. Within a nine-day period in the summer of 2016, three women were brutally murdered in broad daylight while running alone. Fear and outrage was further intensified by the deaths of Molly Tibbetts and Wendy Martinez in 2018. The killing of these women incited a social media frenzy. So why hasn't Jericho's story gone viral? It was only in the small community of American Fork that people were asking questions. It's been over a year, and no one's any closer to uncovering the truth. I grew up in Chicago, where sometimes it feels like violence is part of the city's DNA. But here in the close-knit community of American Fork, violent crime is 82% lower than the national average, and it feels welcoming and safe. There's a lot about this case that just doesn't add up. As a journalist, I feel a deep sense of duty to find out what happened to Jerry, and be a voice for the voiceless. Also looking for answers is journalist Kira Carter. She wrote an article about Jerrica that was published in Cosmo magazine, and that's what sparked my interest in this case. Kira is one of the only people outside the community to investigate Jerrica's disappearance. One of the safest states in the country, somebody like Jerrica can go missing without a trace. Like, how does that even happen? It's a really frustrating case because it's been over a year and we don't know what happened to Jerrica. We don't know if she hurt herself and fell or we don't know if it was something a lot more violent. When Jerrica first went missing, a few people did mention her ex-boyfriend as a potential attacker, but it could be a stranger on the street who snapped. That does happen, and we, we've seen that happen. In your Cosmo piece, too, you talked about a few different cases that you've covered very closely. I've really got national attention and took off on social media. It's really frustrating that Jerrica's case hasn't, because you see something like Molly Tibbetts. Her disappearance created a wave of social media. They received over 2,000 tips. Jerrica has not received anything close to that in terms of tips. 20-year-old Molly Tibbetts went missing while running in Brooklyn, Iowa. After a month-long search, her body was found buried in a cornfield. 
what's the difference between her situation and some of these other cases. Jerrica has a, a history with drug abuse. And I think that made it easy for people to brush off her case and say, you know, well, she probably ran away. She was troubled. Truth is, a lot of us are guilty of passing judgment when drugs are involved. Jericho is staying in a sober living facility, so investigators question whether she went for a run at all. Maybe she just relapsed and ran away. I think the family deserves answers, and you have a strong relationship with the family. I love an opportunity to link up with him and see totally. if we can learn more about Jerrica and figure out what questions they have. Yeah, I think they would be happy to talk to you. Kira reached out to the family and arranged for us to meet. What do you expect from meeting up with the family today? I think it's going to be pretty intense. A lot of emotion, obviously. But they want people to see her as a real person and not just as a, a missing person, you know? Some people jump to the conclusion that Jerrica relapsed and ran away. If anyone can give me some insight into what was going on in Jerrica's life at the time, it's the ones who love her the most. Come on in. Thanks for having us. Yes. This is my family. Hi. Everybody. Great to meet everyone. <laughs> Would you all like to come in here where it's more comfortable? We have more room. Jerrica is the second oldest of four, and her mom had seven siblings who all had kids that Jerrica grew up with. This is a big, beautiful family, man. Let's start with this. Everybody just share some, some like, your fondest memories about, uh, about Jerrica. She could light up a room any time she walked into it with smiles and hugs. She always gave great big hugs. She's quick-witted and just everything. She was just a big laugh and just fun to be around. Ta-da! She was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> she really was. Prankster. Yes. Prankster. A prankster. <laughs> what did you say her personality reminded you of? Oh, Polly D. Uh, <laughs> yes. She loved him. Me, my mom, and Jericho, we would watch Jersey Shore together. She'd run around the house saying, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> the cabs here. Yeah. She's one of a kind. She was always there for me. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. It's hard. She would, just my worst days that I would ever have, she was there. So. Oh, I love you. We heard that sometimes she would run 30 yeah. miles at a time. And... Yes, she wanted to um, run the 100 mile no, marathon. marathons. Running was part of her therapy. It was her natural high. Go into as much detail as you feel comfortable about what some of her challenges were with drug abuse. Jerrica was in a car accident when she was 16 or 17 years old. With the pain medication that she was put on, that's where an addiction perhaps began. And then it turned to heroin. Yeah, and her personality definitely changed, changed after that accident. Right. Just the way she would react towards things, just super negatively. Get angry quicker. And get angry really fast. Are opioids something that a lot of people struggle with in this region? Yeah. Utah, it's, it's yes. one of the number one leading cause of death in Utah is prescription yes. drugs. It's not just Utah. Nationwide, more than 130 Americans die from an opioid overdose every day. She had been sober for about seven months before she went missing. Um, she was doing really well. Did you see her change the way she related to people that she used to hang out with? Oh, yes. She, she cut all of those people completely out of our life. Let's get to the day, February 18th. When did you first know something was wrong? The manager over the sober living facility called me, and that's when she said she'd never return from that run. And I called American Fork City Police Department. I had a heated conversation with him. It got a little heated. He kept saying relapse to me. And I remember saying to him, you say relapse to me one more time, because that's not what the case is here. Why you're so confident that she didn't run, run away? She left all of her belongings except for her phone. And if she was planning to run away or relapse and whatever, she would have packed her things. She would have taken her money. And how hard she worked to build back our trust and everything and rebuild our relationship, she wouldn't just give it away. Would you describe Utah as somewhere that's generally safe? I would have said so 
before Jerrica went missing, you just don't know anymore. It makes you wonder and think about, is there somebody that's targeting these women when they're out running or alone? Or is it someone she knew? Or is it someone she knew?